All right. So for those of you in the room that see me talking into a mic and don't hear any noise coming out of speakers, that's because the mic is for those of us that are watching online. <laughs> and uh, everybody in the room can hear me, right? All the way to the back. I don't have to speak up. Awesome. All right, so I have a few announcements, and then we will kick things off. So first up, if my scroll will work with me here. All right, so the schedule that we have for the Raleigh SEO Meetup monthly events. Um, this uh, building has a co-working space downstairs, and they close up that co-working space at 5. But I don't want to have people have to like leave at 5 and then come back at 6.30. So we do a pizza networking event from 5 until 6.30, and I bribe people to not sit in traffic and instead come down here and hang out and socialize and have some free pizza. That sounds like a pretty decent deal. And then we kick off the actual presentations at 6.30, so that way everybody's had time if they do work for one of those jobs that won't let you work from a laptop anywhere. <laughs> they can uh, finish off their day, clock out at 5, drive across town, fight through traffic, and make it here by 6.30. And then we wrap up the meeting at 8, <clears throat> but you don't have to go home, you just can't stay here. I chase everybody out of here at 8, and there's usually a small group that goes over to Rookies, which is pretty close by, and uh, have drinks, and the liberal exchange of business cards happens over there. Mentioning those business cards, that brings me to one of the little things that I like to do to seed the networking after the event. Uh, quick show of hands, who here knows about or is currently hiring or knows about a company that is hiring for a digital marketing related job? Throw your hand up. Nobody knows about any job openings right now in the industry. That is pretty awesome because usually there's a few hands that go up. All right, so who here is looking? Nobody's looking either. That's really encouraging. All the jobs are filled. <laughs> All right. Next up, sponsors. That pizza that you guys had, that is paid for, and these events are paid for and put on thanks to our sponsors. So I want to run through the roll call on them and mention them. Uh, if you want to help me out to make sure that they're encouraged to continue sponsoring these events, if you take this moment to look them up on Twitter, snap a little picture of the event, of our speakers, something like that, saying thank you, and uh, at mention them, one or more of them on Twitter. That always helps me to convince them to renew their sponsorships in the year ahead. So we have the Raleigh SEO Conference. That event that we do each May is uh, the primary uh, driver for being able to pay for these events. We also have Deep Crawl. And you may have noticed a few of them showing up on the slide deck here. Uh, look to the right, The Digital, Reunion Marketing, Wing Swept, and Opsis. And where did that one go? Ecom Integrate, which somehow got moved off of my list. You remember I mentioned where my list was messing with me? Touch screens are weird and it's swiping things off and taking them out of the way. So Ecom Integrate got removed from my list, but they're also one of our sponsors. They are setting up uh, this video and uh, help us be with being able to do the live feeds. Also, I get approached periodically from companies looking for someone that can help them with particular services, like, I don't know, building a chatbot. <laughs> and uh, I like to try to send those referrals out to members of our group. So if you haven't already, you should put yourself onto our member directory. This is my way of figuring out who in our group does what, where we each specialize, and where I can send those referrals. It's also the place that I go to when I'm looking for new speakers. So that way I can see who's a knowledgeable expert and willing to get in front of the audience here and share their expertise. Now that you're ready to take that note, that URL is bit.ly, bit.ly slash 2019, 2019, that's this year, capital SEO, and then all lowercase meetup, M-E-E-T-U-P. So that's 
bit.ly slash 2019 SEO meetup. If you fill out that form, that will help me to figure out who everybody is, what you specialize in, what referrals I can send you, and what you might want to come up here and speak about. Uh, one more thing, the Internet Summit. Anybody here been to the Internet Summit before? I see a few hands along the back. Uh, anybody here a multi-year attendee of the Internet Summit? Go pretty much every year. That's a really awesome event that comes into this area. We have a discount code if you are thinking of attending. Rawl SEO will save you 50 bucks off of your ticket. So check that out. And without further ado, the bots are coming. <laughs> We're going to have a, a brief chat about chat bots. And we are going to talk today with uh, Teresa Robinson. And uh, she is the founding owner of TR Marketing, a local boutique marketing agency that specializes in helping with building chat bots. And we're also going to be speaking with, in just a few moments, Kevin Welsh, who does uh, custom software solutions. And chatbots are one of those things that he builds. So without further ado, Teresa, I think you're already mic'd up. And this is your computer that we're using. So you should be all set. The floor is yours. So how's everybody doing? Hello? Give me just a second to uh, pull my presentation up. There we go. All right, we should be good to go. Let me just check. OK. So how many in the room uh, knows that they have interacted with a chat bot online? OK, <laughs> good. I, sometimes I give this presentation and not a single hand goes up. So yay, <laughs> at least we know you've, that you've had an interaction with the chat bot. Uh, here's my contact information. This will be on the last slide as well. So you know, if you have any follow-up questions, feel free to contact me. So whoops, just one. Um, so just a little bit about me. Uh, I spent about 20 years as a software tester. And during that time, I, I'm always doing more than one thing. So I um, launched more than one business. I spent several years in my own family-owned barbecue sauce business where my sister and I did all the marketing, the online store, shipping, all that kind of good stuff. And um, I spent many, many years as a dance competitor, dance instructor, judge, choreographer, good stuff like that. And about two and a half years as a tutoring franchise owner, which was not a good match for me, as it turns out. But that is how I ended up in the digital marketing space. So I've owned a digital marketing agency for the last eight years and have continued to narrow down my focus. And um, I have come to the focus of chatbots. So that's how I got where I am now. So what we're going to talk about tonight is what is a chatbot, why would you use a chatbot, and how? So I hope we get those questions answered. First of all, what is a chatbot? Well, it's a way of automating a conversation that you have. Basically, if you can tell me, the chatbot builder, what the conversation should look like, including all the branches based on if they answer certain ways, you won't this to happen if they answer another way you want something else to happen if you can tell me what that conversation looks like I can build your chatbot from that I want you to know that there are different types of chatbots I'm going to talk about one type and Kevin's going to talk about another type of chatbot and there are also different tools to build the different types of chatbots so so there's no misunderstanding I build the chatbots that interface on Facebook Messenger. Those are the only type that I build, and I use the tool called ManyChat to build mine. And um, I am a certified ManyChat Mini agency partner, which means I've taken their courses, I've taken their tests, I've also taken some other courses as well. Um, and uh, the reason that I chose ManyChat as the tool of choice for me is because 
I think ManyChat is the tool that Facebook um, talks to and, and has the most um, interaction with. But there's tools like um, ChatFuel, Chat, um, Mobile Monkey, and things like that. So there are other tools that you could use. So every single person in this room is capable of taking the coursework and building chatbots, but that's just it. I would highly advise you to take some courses because there are rules around how you um, interact with your subscribers, and you can get your Facebook page shut down. So that's the other thing. The chatbots that I built have to operate through a Facebook business page. So, given all of that, why are we even talking about chatbots? Why do they even come into the picture? Well, you can blame our current culture. We're in a world of, I want to know it now. I want to know immediately. You want immediate answers to everything. So, you know, you have Siri, you have Echo, you have even Amazon Prime, where you can order something and have it on your doorstep the very next day. So it's all this instant response and instant gratification. That, that's our culture. That's why we're talking about chatbots, because they can give you that instant gratification and instant answers. The other reason or several other reasons, are that the social media news feeds are very crowded, especially Facebook. Um, and Facebook publicly admits that your organic reach has been greatly reduced. It's been happening over the last few years. So even if you have 10,000 followers on your Facebook page, when you make a post, it might go out to 2%, maybe 5% if you're really good and have an active audience. So. They, they admit that and they prioritize engagement. So if you don't post anything that gets engagement, Facebook doesn't show it to a lot of people. And how the algorithm works is you make a post, Facebook says, oh, let me show this to a few people. And if you get any reactions and comments and shares, then it'll decide to show it to a few more. And the fact that to run Facebook ads, they can be expensive. And if you don't know what you're doing, you can waste a lot of money. So if you think boosting is a great idea, just let me throw out there, I don't advise boosting posts because you really don't have much control over where that money goes and what Facebook does with it. So that's all I'm going to say about that. That's a whole other conversation. The other thing, the other reason we're talking about chatbots is the trend of the interaction on the social networks moving to the messaging apps. And these are the top six right here. WhatsApp, but take a look at the second and the third. Facebook Messenger and WeChat, okay? So, check this out. In January of this year, Facebook announced that they will be combining the messaging apps of Messenger, WhatsApp, and Instagram. Now, if you don't think that's huge, think about it for just a few minutes, and your head should start exploding. So I am really um, advising people to start building their Instagram followers for this reason. And of course, um, when it all gets combined, we don't exactly know what it's going to look like yet, but um, the plan is for you to be able to message and communicate with all the subscribers from all three of those from one place. So it's supposed to come out late this year, maybe early next year. That, that's me dropping fire on you right there. <laughs> and there's huge opportunity here. Out of all the business pages on Facebook, thousands and thousands and thousands of Facebook pages, only 1% of businesses are using messenger marketing or some kind of chat bot to promote their business. So even though chatbots have been around since about 2015, you would still be an early adopter. So there's, there's room to get in and be different still. Now here's the other piece of fire you want to know is that messenger messages, much like text messages, messenger messages get read 80 to 90%. That is huge, but go one step beyond and you can get 40 to 50% open rates, okay? Compare that 
to email, right? And you're going, okay, yeah, right, sure. Yeah, it's going to get 80 to 90% open rates. I'm here to tell you that is true. Those numbers hold true. Um, the tool that I use, ManyChat, for each little piece of the conversation, it will tell you how many people it showed it to and then how many people actually clicked through. If there was a call to action or something to do on that little piece of the conversation, it'll tell you how many people actually clicked it. And if there's a branch, a decision branch, yes or no, it'll tell you how many people went to the no and how many people went to the yes. So it, it really does. They have held true for every single chatbot that I have built because I was skeptical myself when I started doing it. But it, it is true. It really is true. So here's some math, okay? A thousand people on your email list versus a thousand people on your chatbot list, your subscriber. I'll give you a 20% open rate. How many know your email open rates? Okay, you should take a glance. You should know them. Okay, 20% average-ish, maybe that's pretty good. 10% conversion rate, I'll give you that. Now, that's a little ambitious, but I'll give you 10%. So that means 20 people opened your email. Uh, excuse me, 200 people opened your email, and 20 people followed through. Say your call to action was to buy a $100 product. That's $2,000 in sales versus 1,000 people on your chatbot list. 1,000 subscribers, 80% open rate. I'll give you the low end, 80%. The same 10% conversion rate and the same $100 product, that's $8,000 you just made. So you can take that 80%, and if you know your conversion rate on what you're doing, you can plug in your own numbers and sort of play that game at home. It's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Okay. Benefits to you as the business owner, okay? This is why you'd want to chat, want to use a chatbot. Well, the first thing is it meets the expectation of our current society. The person who can usually get the answer to a buyer first, answer a question first, is usually the person that will get the business. And with a chatbot, you're not the one that has to sit there and type an answer. The chatbot takes care of all the questions, or it can immediately so it's instant feedback people get their answers right then it automates a lot of those level one conversations that you have to have over and over again you can just automate them but you don't have to type them in you don't have to respond yourself it's really easy to segment people as they come in as a subscriber you can tag to your heart's content you can tag them if they came in from, um, say, a certain post. You can tag them if they came in from a QR code. However they came into your system, you can tag them that way. You can tag them as they answer questions. Just whatever tagging you would like to do, just know that you can do it. And what I think the chatbots accomplish is it, it sort of bridges the gap, much like video does people getting to know, like, and trust you, it, it makes that happen faster. And if you can help someone get to know you faster, but you don't have to invest that time chunk, I think it hastens the face-to-face -face meeting. So if you're doing local marketing or local services, I think it's really important to have a face-to-face -face meeting. But with chatbots sort of bridging the gap, I think you can get there faster. And then, Basically, your customers, they're actually going to read what you send them. <laughs> that's, that's, I can't tell you how huge that is. People actually read what you send out. Other benefits is that the chatbot is very non-threatening. The conversation through a chatbot is fun. Um, people don't, they don't put up that wall. Oh, I'm not giving my email address or I'm not giving my phone number. That wall doesn't go up with the chatbots like it does when you send people to a landing page. So it's easier to get information from people when you ask through the chatbot. And also, the customer is in control. They can type stop or unsubscribe anytime. 
they're in total control and they can resubscribe with a start but they can get out anytime so it's great for nurturing your database um, and they're fast information back and forth and it's fun so you can interject emojis your personality because they should be very conversational when you build a chat bot for somebody or you know for a certain group of customers you don't want to have it text heavy long drawn out these are quick conversations just like text messaging is but you can throw in emojis you can throw in um, fun images gifts mp3s all that kind of stuff you can throw in there so it's very brandable um, you can interject personality it's very conversational so people they just respond to them a lot better than with email or a landing page and stuff like that. Oops. So these are the types of things that you can deliver through a chat bot. PDF text, MP3, links, images. You are limited on video to 24 megabytes, and I'm not sure. Depends on the size of video when you create it as to how many minutes that might be. But um, just think of short video snippets, a couple minutes, three minutes, maybe four minutes. Is this making sense to everybody? Okay, good. All right. So what does a good chatbot candidate look like? Well, if you end up answering the same questions over and over, you might be a chatbot candidate. Uh, same thing with emails. If you have an email nurturing sequence, Okay, you can do that through chatbot, but people will read it. People will see it. Your audience might need reminders. You can also um, effectively do chatbot support desk through these types of, of um, chatbots that I build. You can sell stuff, merchandise, tickets, through a Stripe account. If you have a Stripe account, it's really easy to set up um, cards of different um, things you have to sell, different products. So here's some ways you can use a chatbot. First of all, you can have them slide in on your website. You can embed buttons on the sidebars. Uh, you can have a little strip across the top of your website for people to opt in and send message and opt in to your uh, chatbot. So basically it says, hey, send message. You're coming in through Facebook Messenger. If I can build a conversation for you, Okay, you said, okay, Teresa, I need a chat bot that does X. I build that conversation, and then I can attach that whole conversation to a URL. So whatever else you can do with the URL, you can do this with a chat bot. So you can put the URL in a post. You can put it in print for somebody. Any electronic communication, you can drop the URL in there. They also have a growth tool that can be triggered. You can trigger the chat bot through a comment on a Facebook post. So whether it's just an organic post or whether you're running traffic to that post, either way, you can put in a comment and it triggers the chat bot. So that's another way. And obviously, if you can connect a chat bot conversation to a URL, then you can connect that to a QR code. So what I was doing is, uh, Facebook, they had QR, um, excuse me, they had messenger scan codes for a while that were round. Uh, they've done away with those this summer, but what I did was print a messenger scan code on a name tag. So if everybody, you know, wanted a demo of a chat bot, I just had them scan the code. So you can do the same thing with the QR code. You can wear it, you can print it, you can print it on a poster. Lots, and this is just the tip of the iceberg here. So here's a few of the things that you can do with the chat bot. There's so much more. These are just a few. Um, event registration. I've done several event registrations with chat bots. Um, it makes it easy to send out reminders. Once people have registered for a class or an event, you can send out news and updates, reminders. Um, you can also send coupons through the chat bot. Loyalty programs. Um, I've built a couple of different ones. One is just a very short and sweet uh, loyalty program meant for a low ticket restaurant like a 
coffee shop or an ice cream shop, it counts the number of times you visited and then tells you when you're free scoop of ice cream when you get that. And with all of it, you just show it to the person behind the counter. It's very, it, it's minimal work on the part of the person behind the counter for either of these. The other one is a really robust restaurant program where we deliver offers and you just show it on your phone. I ask you to type in how much you spent. The restaurant doesn't have to keep up with anything. Then I run all kinds of data, all kinds of numbers on the back end through Google Sheets. So the point of all that is you can ask for information inside the chatbot conversation and you can take it out of the chatbot and you can drop it different places. You can drop it into a Google Sheet. You can drop it and interface through Zapier to send it to Aweber or MailChimp. So there's lots of things you can do and lots of information you can pull out by asking um, inside the chatbot. Lead magnets, um, QR codes for posters, video training snippets, um, and things like a, a quiz or a scavenger hunt. So I've done a little quiz where, depending on how you answer, you're, you're totaling up points, and based on the points at the end of the quiz, you win X prize. So it can do math, it can do logic, it can ask for information, it can do surveys for you. I have another survey that I did. Um, but all of it, you can pull the information out and you can dump it where you can do some analysis on it. So the point is the, the messenger chatbots really work. People read what you send, the numbers hold true, and it, it's awesome for certain business. It's not for everybody, it's not for every business, but it is certainly a really viable way to nurture your database. So there's my contact information on Facebook and uh, Instagram. Be glad to have a conversation with you if you want to. So I hope that um, gave you an idea, just to help you wrap, help wrap your head around what a chatbot might do. So thanks. All right. Okay. So, quick show of hands, software developers. All right. Web developers. All right. Marketing, advertising, consultant type uh, others. Okay. So, I will not be doing code, I don't think. And uh, let me find a place to put this. Okay. One second here.
account for this at the table if you want it at the entrance table. All right, <clears throat> so um, thank you, Frank, for having me. Thank you, Teresa, for getting everybody warmed up. I'm going to talk about custom code chatbots, which are similar to what Teresa just explained to you, but maybe a little bit different. Uh, my name is Kevin Welsh. I own a company called Welsh Technologies. We started in 2004. We do software, web application development. So Frank's claim, and I use this as my cue for what it is that I'd be talking about, is that lead generation, sales, survey, segmentation, that bots can help people engage with your content. And I would add to that that bots reach your audience where they are. People no longer have to come to your website. They can connect with your information from their phone without browsing to you know, your page. Uh, they can talk to Siri or Cortana or Alexa, right? They've got access to this information right where they are in the moment. So when you think about some company or agency that is just the, you know, the best example of high quality customer service, what, who comes to mind? I mean, everybody, this should be the number one, it's the DMV, right? That's like, they nail it, they, they get it, right? Okay, so, so the reason that they don't is because they don't have the budget to meet that scale, right? There's more people trying to get their services than they have people to provide those services. And so it's a cluster type of scenario, right? It's not ideal. So um, I'm going to try to do this live-ish if I can make it happen here. I don't know for sure. Um, So let's say you were looking to renew your registration for the North Carolina DMV. Have, have anybody been through this process yet recently? They built a bot, right? And, and this is like a really nice quality experience that you do not expect from the DMV. I did not expect from the DMV, right? So I, I'm not sure about the security implications of you seeing the last five digits of my title. But basically, you start here, here's this conversational thing, right? A couple of little checklist items that probably most people end up messing up, so they put that right in your face. And then they want to know if I have this information handy, and yes, I do. And then they want to know my license plate and my title. And just because we're streaming this, I think I might bring this to another screen to fill that out if you don't mind no offense but <laughs> there are hackers in the world yeah so i'm gonna that's off screen right <laughs> yeah right that's that's exactly right so uh, 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 uh. so i fill that in i click a button that says search and i'm not going to show you the entire process frank didn't give me permission to actually renew my registration here but just to show you a little bit about how it works so they come back I owe some money, they know what kind of car I have, uh, yes, this is right, they know, um, and you could follow me in the parking lot and figure out what kind of car I have, so I'm not worried about that, right? They know my insurance, so these are all things, if you think about it, they previously would have had to build the really long form, and we, we all just hate the really long form, first name, last name, email, right? And, and Chrome makes it a little bit easier because it'll fill out most of that stuff for you, but not necessarily everything. And, and so it's a pain, right? So what, what this is, is is an example of a bot that has a connection to a database. It took a little bit of input from me. It went out to some other system. It got some more information. It answered a lot of questions for me. It's helping me fill out this form. I don't feel like I'm working against the form. It's just asking me questions and I'm answering them one at a time. And it's really linear and it's really simple. And there's like no frustration dealing with this. There's a ton of frustration filling out forms and surveys, and that's why people don't do it.
right? So it's the total opposite of their offline experience. And again, it's because of the scalability thing, right? On the web, they can scale that experience. They can make it one-on-one. -on -one, they can make it feel personal. Okay, so then bots come in sort of levels of complexity, right? And the starting point is a decision tree where, uh, you know, you give people some choices, they pick A or B, or they pick A or B or C, they, you know, they fill in some kind of answer, and, and then you decide what's next. It's the choose-your-own-adventure type of, type of experience, right? And that's a great way to present frequently asked questions as an example, right? It's a great way, um, I mean, Teresa covered a ton of things that, that you can do that way, right? So, uh, so the DMV system is something like a decision tree still, but there's a database behind it. So they didn't have to pre-code every single person's license number when they built the bot. The bot has the ability, the code for the bot has the ability to go look up in the database to find out that I did my inspection and so I'm eligible to register, right? So the data behind that bot is changing over time and that requires a little bit different approach to, um, to how you work with that. So then, um, then, then the next level maybe is when we get into like natural language processing, which uh, in, the, in the bot world they call it intent, right? So we're trying to find out what's the person's intent. So instead of asking them, you know, to, um, you know, to fill out the license plate number and the, the last digits of the title, they might say, how can I help you today? And it's up to me to tell it, I want to renew my registration or I need a replacement driver's license. And it's going to parse what I type. It's going to take my words and it's going to figure out what am I trying to do? What's my intent in dealing with this bot, right? So, um, so again, it doesn't have to be, I mean, the, the example that I showed was typed. It doesn't have to be typing, right? It can be speaking to, uh, to Siri or Alexa. Um, so there's a you know, bunch of ways that this can happen. It can, um, okay, so the, the next level, if you will, right, the next sort of more complicated thing here is um, the idea of uh, if you use Google Analytics to watch what people do on your site, you can get a ton of information, right? People hit the home page, then they go straight to shop or they go straight to specials or they do whatever, right? You can sort of watch people's paths. So one of the things that you can't find out with Google Analytics is what people cannot find, right? Any missed opportunity, anything that people want that your site doesn't deliver, you're never going to get that with analytics, right? Because it's watching what do people do, what do they click on, where do they go, what pages do they hit, and it's tracking that data where a bot can, can track those conversations. So let's put ethics and privacy and security and all those kind of things on hold for a moment, right? And just talk about what could happen. So I'm going to assume that you've got a privacy policy in place that lets people know that you're doing these kind of things if you're doing these kinds of things, right? But it's in the realm of possibility that you can find what are people searching for? What are they talking about? What are their frustrations? Um, and, and, you know, you can deep dive into that information. And then, of course, with, um, you know, machine learning and artificial intelligence, you can get even deeper and start to look for trends in that pile of communication, right? You can start to tell that lots of people have a similar frustration about a specific product. Maybe we need to get involved with engineering to work out some kink with this product, right? So there's some really interesting stuff that you can get when you start to deep dive on the data in those conversations. Okay, so why chatbots? A billion messages to business every month you can't scale that with people, right? You cannot hire enough people to type the reply uh, to meet that need. It's overwhelming. I think Teresa commented on this. You've got eight times the response rate to, um, to text messages than you do to email. This says 30% of customers report receiving. If you flip it, that's 70% of customers who would accept a text from you, but you don't send it to them because 70% are not out there actively engaging customers this way. And it's customers who are open to it. And then 64% of people told Facebook that the reason that they message businesses is because they're messaging anyway. They're like, they're already there, right? So this is the point of meeting people where they are. They're not on your website, they're in Messenger. 
Okay, so, so why now, right? Why chatbots now? So the first is this economy of scale piece, right? It's a, it's a big deal. The numbers of people that are interacting with us online are going up and up, and we need a way to deal with that without hiring up staff. The integration with social media and messaging platforms, the fact that artificial intelligence and machine learning, this used to be data scientist stuff tucked away in a lab trying to invent the next, like, you know, super computer type of thing, right? And now this technology has made its way into marketing. So we've got smart digital agencies who are mining massive amounts of data, looking for trends to figure out how to market better, how to innovate, right? So, so the world is changing and machine learning is not just for people locked away in labs, it's for kind of everybody today. Um, voice is mainstream. Right? So with my voice, I can activate a whole bunch of things. It's, they're pretty good at understanding what I say. I don't know if you guys know, there was this like IBM tool from the 80s or 90s called Dragon Speak, where you could talk into a mic and it would type what you were talking. And it was, I mean, you had to train it forever and it was decent, but you know, I still prefer to type than to use that kind of thing. But today the voice seems to be able to keep up with me. I mean, my car occasionally like doesn't get what I'm saying, but, but you know what I'm saying? Like for the most part, Voice apps understand what I say, and for the most part, when they speak back to me, they speak intelligibly. So, so there's that. Then there's this whole thing that um, in a conversation with a bot or, or with a person, right, the attention level goes way up and the frustration level comes way down. If I'm on your website and I'm looking for something it, it's that needle in a haystack thing. Number one, I don't know if it's even there, right? I don't know if you have the piece of information that I want on your site at all, right? And the process of looking may not be intuitive because you built one navigation structure and I might be thinking about things in a different set of categories than you are. So looking for content on somebody's site when there's all those distractions is really frustrating. When that comes to a point and I get to ask a thing a question and get a specific response back, as long as the bot itself isn't frustrating, right? That's a, that's a low frustration, high engagement, high, high attention kind of um, experience. And so that really works. And then what I, you know, what I hear all the time from you know, marketing types, advertising types is this like, how do we get insight into the buyer's journey, right? I want, Everything is storytelling and buyer's journey um, where you're trying to figure out somebody was sitting on their couch and they wanted something or they wanted to solve some problem. And then eventually they ended up buying your product or buying your service and people want to understand what happened in between. And so if we go back to that analytics piece, there's only so much information you can get if they searched the web, found your site, went to a page and bought it. If they're engaging in a conversation, there's an entire new world of information that you can get about what they're interested in, what their frustrations are, what their questions are, and, and it helps you improve. Okay, so how do you, how do you build these things, right? So um, Microsoft has the Azure bot service and they've got this paragraph that explains about conversational experiences and uh, IBM has a Watson Assistant, which is a very similar thing that talks about natural language and um, human interactions. And Google has Dialogflow, which talks about rich conversational experiences. And so, you know, the big players, as you'd expect, have the big tools and they solve most of the problems with these big tools. And that is you have to figure out what is somebody's intent, what are the things that they're talking about, right? The objects, the entities that they're talking about, and then how do you help them get those things done? So, um, uh, yeah, okay, so, so intense, right? That's things like finding out the status of an order. Is that big enough? Or um, trying to put something in my cart, right? If I'm shopping on an e-commerce site, that's, that's the intent mining. And again, it's done with natural language. So. So I don't have to write out in advance every single way you could say, please tell me the status of my order, right? It uses the ability to understand English and many other languages to work out that that's what somebody is trying to say the same way that we do as people. Um, and then the entity thing is, you know, there you, you want to be able to deal with 
an email address as an email address and not just a bunch of random characters. You want to be able to deal with phone numbers as something that you could send a text to and not just a random number string. So you want to start to take these inputs and break them into objects that you can work with that you can do something with. And then there's even things like, you know, like small talk, right? What if somebody says something clever to the bot? What do you want it to do, right? Who are you? Who's your boss? Um, what's your name, right? Those kind of things. Like, you have a question? Uh, I don't know whether you want questions during your talk or not. But, okay. Shoot. So what I would throw in is mm -hmm. the, uh, the biggest problem I see with uh, cus ordinary customers, not technical people interacting, and even technical people like myself interacting with the business. Online. Right. Sure. To, to, fi to fix the current ones, right? Did everybody sort of hear that? I think it's more of a comment than a question. Um, sure. So, so I think it was more of a comment than a question about, you know, or maybe the question would be, what do you do in the situation where, as a person, you're telling it some fact that you know is right? My address is P.O. Box 1234. And whoever programmed this thing is looking for P.O. Box and only three digits. And so it's not letting you put in that fourth digit. Or it used to be that email addresses all ended with dot and something with three characters. So those of us who write code to prevent you from making a mistake would say the only valid thing you can type in the email address box is something at something dot and three characters. And so now today there's dot two characters and there's dot 20 characters, right? There's everything seems to be a valid email address and old code is gonna, is gonna break, right? So, so my answer is, yeah, old code unfortunately breaks, which, um, you know, which is part of the maintenance process, right? It, it, it happens with vehicles, they need maintenance, buildings need maintenance, code needs maintenance, especially when the rules change and things adapt over time. So, so it's definitely a failure. The, the risk and the advantage on the bot side is a well-coded bot is gonna report back those kinds of issues. So it's tracking its own history, it's, it's looking for failures. Um, where typical code doesn't, right? A lot of times, you know, if you just build a contact form and somebody has an issue, they don't submit it and you never find out, right? So, so in this case, at least a, a smart bot is gonna know, hey, we got stuck at this spot and then whoever's job it is to train, and, and I could talk a little bit about training, but that's, that's a process too, is helping improve the quality of the bot that you've already built. But I, I think we have some time at the end for questions maybe. I just wondering, mm -hmm. Sure, sure, right? So, so like the, the DMV example, they're talking to a database to look up a bunch of information, right? There's, there's nothing that would stop us, and in fact, it's pretty simple to do, um, to have a bot just be uh, you know, the first line of defense for customer service, and, and you build in a rule that after five minutes of you know, contact with the bot, the bot's gonna reach out to a real person in customer service, right? So you can have one bot that can service thousands of people, try to thin that down to just a few who then are waiting in line for even fewer customer service, you know, employees, right? So, so that's, that's possible too. So, um, so another, um, I have a company called Music of Pristina. We make like high-end consumer audio products and um, I've got a quick, demo here of a bot that um, okay let me see if I can do this from here so can you read the screen so it says greet yes okay um,
high. Great, right? Uh, can you tell me my order status? And it says to view the status to do the sorry, wow. To view the status of a current order, please let me know your email address. Right? So I was talking about entities before. Uh, the way this is set up, I'm not logged in, so it doesn't know who I am, right? I'm just anonymous user on the website or um, sitting on the couch talking to um, Alexa and I say, hey, ask Music of Pristina, what's the status of my order, right? And so the bot knows it needs some information. So, so we built it with an intent that talks about order status and to, to fulfill that intent, there's two facts that I need to know, and that's your email address and your order number. So I say my email address is kwelsh at welshtechnologies.com. And now it wants to know my order number. So it didn't say, hey, Kevin, and, and it could have, Right? But there's this whole security privacy thing that as software developers we should be thinking about too. And so on the one hand, this is a bot for customers to find out about their order status. On the other hand, you could turn this into a bot to get people's first name and last name from their email address. If this were some high volume place like Walmart and I went here and I typed in every Gmail address that I could think of and it came back with, hi Kevin, hi Sally, hi Tim, hi Bill, right? I'd be able to mine data out of the bot. So we have to be really careful about how friendly it is with security in mind, right? So, so it doesn't say, hey Kevin, how are you? It doesn't say, hey Kevin, the status of your order is X, Y, Z because then you could also find out about purchases, right? So, so in our example, it doesn't greet me with my name. It wants to know the order number. The order number was one, two, three, four. And it hits the back end and it says, we received your order and are in the process of building it. Seems you ordered one of the Virtuoso PCM. And so it could send me anything at this point, right? In, in the sense, I've like authenticated with an email address and an order number and it would be really hard to guess both of them together. So we felt like that's secure enough. And for some companies it's not, but in our case it is. Um, and then I could show you other stuff, but why not? Well, I think I'm getting close to time here. So, um, so dialogue flow is Google's product and here are sort of the top level things that you work with. You build intents, which are what are people trying to do entities, which are things like email addresses and order numbers. There's a piece in there for small talk so that when I say hi, it says hi back. When I say who's your boss, it says Kevin's my boss, but Bruce Springsteen is the boss, that kind of stuff. Um, there's knowledge, which means the bot can learn things over time. Fulfillment is it goes out to other resources. Training is I can run the bot in a loop and help it to get better. Um, history and analytics, we kind of mentioned that there's just a ton of conversational data that you can pull out of that, right? If you're selling cars, and you ask somebody how many kids do they have because you're trying to figure out what car you want to sell them, you now know how many kids they have, right? So there's a bunch of things that you can get that people are not going to fill out in a form that they might tell a bot. Um, so really, right, why chatbot? So there's this whole sales insight kind of piece. Um, and you're conversationally building a profile, not having people fill out boring forms. There's the customer service piece um, where this gentleman had mentioned, right, you can provide a sense of resolution while you wait for a real customer service rep to show up. And then there's this buyer's journey piece uh, where you can start to find out what did people not find on your website because that's, I think, one of the biggest things is it's really hard to know what people could not find on your site unless you have a way of talking to them. And that's really hard to do when the scale hits the thousands. So back to Frank's point from lead generation to sales, surveys to segmentation, chatbots can help your business and your customers and increase engagement with your content right where your customers are. And I hope I proved that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you much. Hey. So now we want to open it up to Q&A for both of you guys. Got you want the... Here. No, it's just staying next to each other. Okay. That way you can 
both sort of volley the questions back and forth. Okay. I just have to use the mics to repeat back to the internet audience. So, who has questions? I, I always have questions. <laughs> I, I I think I have the lavalier yeah. still, so I'm still mic'd. Okay. You can hold that one as okay. well. So as a developer, I, mm -hmm. I, I know the technology doesn't always go the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes it's it being a tremendous help, and other times business views it as a tremendous help when it really isn't, and the cust your customer's looking at it as just the opposite. So I'll give you an example of an older technology. These automated phone responses where people use touchtone dial tones to get to the right spot. Right. Even to do various things online, like make their inquiry. Uh, it, I'm sure, cut down on the amount of contact and overload that their human people had. But it also introduced a lot of frustration in their customer set when they weren't getting to the right spot. And anybody who had a more complex question than like you were just describing, if you fit the form, you've gone from 10,000 people filling out the form to just uh, 100 people maybe who have a custom question, right? Right. Do you do anything in your bot chatbots to allow for short circuiting of the over questioning from the chatbot to the user so that they don't get frustrated with the chatbot? Sure. So, so the question to anyone watching from home, uh, quick background, sometimes phone systems have this frustration navigational thing where you can't find the option that you want. And how do we avoid building chatbots that create that same experience? So to me, I think, and you probably agree, the, the number one thing is you have got to test it. You've got to be in the mindset of the user and, and run testing um, I, th I think it's easy to build a thing, expect that somebody on the client team is going to test it for you and they're going to run it through usually the, the success paths and not those failure paths. And so um, there's no substitute for bringing anonymous people in like a focus group it's, that's big in the ad agency space. Um, as you get to smaller businesses, that probably is cost prohibitive to do a focus group with you know, 10 or 30 people and, and have them run through and look for those, the types of things that as a developer, right, I know the pitfall. So I'm not going to ask it the question that I know it won't answer. I think Martin and I on the way over here were talking about, um, I think it might have been a Microsoft failure where somebody managed to trick the, the chatbot into um, agreeing with Nazi values or something along those lines, right? And so, so that's, um, I mean, yeah, that can happen. Uh, having somebody responsible for monitoring it, right? It's, it's not build it and then just, you know, walk away assuming that every problem is solved. It's build it knowing that instead of 100 people in customer service, we need 10, but they're going to monitor the chatbot. And to answer that question from a simpler perspective in the mini chat tool that I use, I always provide a way to, and you have to do it in a more mechanical way, but I do provide an option do you just have a question and I can send an email to the person and let them jump out of the loop? Simple is great. <laughs> Simple is good. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So you use Facebook as your platform for your chat bot and they input customer data, say what the customer wants and input that they give it more than it should have in that link. Personally, Um, Facebook does know um, the email that you set up your profile with and it could know other information but and you have of course a Facebook identification um, Right, Facebook may have it, but I can't access anything 
uh, other than the email and the phone number? I have no idea, but I can ask the user to verify their email and their phone number and then get it out of the chat bot. I can also ask for additional information, but I cannot access what Facebook has saved. Yeah. Uh, for the question about not having Facebook have access to it, we're sort of leaning on Facebook, so maybe platforms that we would engage with that messages. You don't have to connect your chat bot to the Facebook messages if you don't want to have your Facebook Yeah, yeah. True. True. But right. But fa Yeah. So Facebook and Messenger are actually two different apps and you don't have to have Facebook a, a Facebook account to use Messenger. You can just use Messenger. Just FYI. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Me, no. I mean, those are, those are sort of old known things to prevent against. Um, we, don't, we don't do much in the Facebook connection, so I think you're better to answer the, the messenger side of things. Ours are more custom. Um, but yeah, the, the whole, you know, I think for Facebook, it's, you'd have to read their terms of service, right? Their, their privacy statement and their terms of service to understand exactly what it is that they do with their data. Um, you know, Amazon Alexa is guilty of similar things. There, there. I know there are ways to delete that entire stored conversation with Alexa, right? I've seen that button myself. I know that that exists, but I'm not as sure on the Facebook side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can delete your conversations out of uh, Messenger, and that'll wipe them out of the chat bot as well. Um, but I would look to the the tool itself to take care of any security issues. Now, I, I would not be doing that as the chatbot builder from my end of things through, through the mini chat tool, if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sure is. You you would do it through a post, just a regular post um, on a, a group or uh, on your profile, on your business page. And through the growth tool that is offered through ManyChat, you can ask the person in your post to make a comment, and the comment can trigger the chat bot directly. Now, once it gets to the chat bot, you're going to ask for a uh, keyword for it to continue. But at that point, once they're in there, they are your chatbot subscriber. And all your subscribers live in ManyChat. And again, ManyChat is the only tool that I use. So your subscribers live in ManyChat. So if you want them outside of ManyChat, you need to capture the information and dump it into a spreadsheet. Yes, any... Any type of campaign that is based or, or driving people to a certain post, whether it's an ad or whatever it is, you can activate a chat bot through it. Okay. Yeah, Frank. Okay, the question is, what do you do for maintenance on a chatbot? And I'll answer mine sure, and then sure, you can sure. answer from yours. So, yes, there's maintenance involved because things change. The connection between ManyChat and Facebook sometimes drops, and you have to reinitialize. So 
Uh, once the chatbot conversations, and there can be many, are built, you do have to have someone look after them and pay attention to them and follow up, change dates, change prices, change messages. Um, you can, one of the things that you'd be able to do though is broadcast to your subscribers. And there are rules around all of this, but you can broadcast to them. So you would either need a tool that you can operate as the business owner or um, contact the person who is maintaining your chat bot and have them do it for you. And that's kind of the way I base my service around is I am your chat bot provider so whatever you need done through your chatbot I would do for you but everybody is capable of learning how to do it it just takes a little coursework so you don't make the mistakes um, according to Facebook's terms of service and get your page shut down same <laughs> I mean re really it's this it's the same thing I think you can, so dialogue flow, the one that I showed from Google, uh, you can learn how to use those tools. It will take a decent amount of time to get really good and really comfortable with it. And it may be more cost effective to hire someone to do it for you. Um, exactly. I think if you're a do it yourselfer, then try it out and, and learn. And if you're not, then people like us are glad to provide that service. Anybody else? Yeah. Um, one of the things I noticed is um, that oftentimes bots and other forms come, come popping up when you just visited the site. And this, I don't know how it applies to Facebook because I did Facebook, so I'm sorry. Uh, but uh, other web, websites, mm -hmm. businesses that you want to go and browse, like uh, just like in the old time department store, you'd always always somebody who pops up to ask you, what are you looking for and can I help you? Uh, but that's not what you want. But that's the first thing that people have engineered into the website. Is, is there a way to figure out that the person might be interested in providing more information and doing a subscribe or chatting with a bot instead of just making that the first thing that you pop up on the screen? Sure, sure. So the question was, uh, does it have to be the case that as soon as you hit a site, the chat bot jumps up and wants to chat with you? And most of us don't like that, right? So, um, so yeah, there's all kinds of things that you can use as a trigger. So you could use the duration on the site, right? So you drop a cookie when somebody gets there and you count to 120 and then you pop it up. Or you can count number of page views or the vertical distance that a person has scrolled, right? So there's all sorts of things that you can do that are better than you hit my home page, here comes the bot. And I, I mean, I agree with you. I think subtlety is, is, um, is a good thing. Mm -hmm. Martin? Yeah. Um, some of the chatbots attempt to pretend to be a human being and others make sure they're a Sure. Sure. So Martin's question or statement was that sometimes chatbots pretend to be a human being. And what do we think about that? And um, I have an experience of reaching out to Microsoft about their Surface headset. I didn't know if it had a mic. And I asked if it had a mic. And I didn't know if it was a bot or a person talking back to me. The, there was a couple of grammar glitches. And so I thought it might have been a real person. And it came back with, yeah, it has a mediocre mic. And I said back something along the lines of mediocre. And it's like, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of headsets have mediocre mics. And I'm like, why mediocre? Mediocre means good, not really good. Um, and so it was this really odd engagement. And, and it got me thinking, like, is, is there a person who English is not their first language? And they pick the word mediocre and maybe shouldn't have? Or is it a bot that looked that word up? and is tossing it out and it shouldn't have and do I report it, right? So, so it, it's uncomfortable to me to not know if that's a real person or not. So, um, so yeah, I think there's value in announcing up front that I'm the bot from XYZ Corporation. Um, I don't know that everybody would agree with me on that, right? I think sometimes marketers like to try to fly just below the radar, but you know, 
my ethics say let's tell people that it's code and not a person? Yeah, I absolutely agree. The first thing I do is, hi, I'm so-and-so's chatbot. Can I help you? And make it clear that you're talking to a chatbot. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else? All right, Hi. thank you. Yeah, good job to you too.